All right, everyone, in this video, I want to talk about three options for expanding the mandible. Now, it's clear that there are several options for expanding the maxilla, some of them better than others. Basically, there are uh, Schwartz appliances, which are plastic uh, mechanical appliances that simply push on the teeth and uh, expand the maxilla that way. Those are more effective in younger children because when you push on the teeth of adults, you end up just flaring the teeth. There are the so-called growth appliances such as AGA, ALF, DNA, um, which in my opinion, calling them growth appliances is a misnomer because I actually think all that they are are glorified mechanical appliances similar to the Schwartz in that all that they really do is they push on the teeth, um, which again in adults is not the best approach. Uh, and then there's the third option for expanding the maxilla, which is the MSE. The MSE is a bone-borne appliance. It does not push on the teeth. It is screwed into the maxilla, and it has a turn screw. And when that turn screw is uh, adjusted, then it, it applies force directly into the maxilla and splits the maxilla at the suture, creating bone-borne skeletal expansion in the maxilla. And then the fourth often, uh, excuse me, the fourth option, of course, is jaw surgery, uh, in which the maxilla is cut above the upper front teeth and relocated into a forward position and screwed into place using plates that hold it in that forward position. Then bone comes in and uh, fills the, the, the fracture that the surgeon creates. So those are your options for expanding the maxilla. But this leaves people wondering, well, okay, so I expanded my maxilla, but what about my mandible? How does the mandible come to meet the now forward expanded uh, and laterally expanded maxilla? And so I want to talk about three options for that. The first option uh, for expanding the mandible is the least invasive option, which is SFOT. SFOT stands for Surgically Facilitated Orthodontic Therapy. Now, a caveat of this is that you're not actually expanding the, ma the mandible when you do this. What you're actually doing is you're just creating an opportunity to move the mandibular teeth substantially farther forward because what SFOT does is that, uh, so, in the SFOT procedure, the gums are flayed open and then freeze-dried bone, and a lot of it, is added to the lower arch. And once this freeze-dried bone is added to the lower arch, this gives the orthodontist tons of wiggle room for uh, expanding the, the lower teeth forward, or I should say moving the lower teeth forward orthodontically using clear aligners such as Invisalign. That's right, so with SFOT, you usually don't use braces. My understanding is that after that freeze-dried bone is added, things are very easily moved after the procedure, and so Invisalign is used to move the lower teeth forward, and also this is done on the upper teeth as well, so the gums on the uppers can be flayed open as well, and freeze-dried bone added there, so that the upper teeth can also be moved forward substantially, much more than you could move those teeth forward without having added bone there to create uh, material that the teeth could then be moved through. So for example, Dr. Bill Hang basically does this, but without the SFOT. He, he just moves the teeth forward, but without adding a ton of bone first to, um, you know, to provide uh, material that the bone can be moved into. SFOT is something I will most likely be doing uh, sometime next year, simply because my gums right now are so thin from my prior orth orthodontic treatment that actually my orthodontist, Dr. Zubad Nuaz, does not even feel comfortable moving my teeth at all unless some bone is added. Um, so I will have much more to say about SFOT later. The second option for expanding the mandible is a procedure called MSDO, Mandibular Symphysial uh, Distraction Osteogenesis, MSDO. 
And what this does is it expands the mandible at what's called um, the mandibular symphysis, which is this joint right here. And so basically this is like MSE for the mandible. And what, what this procedure entails is cutting the mandible here through the gum, not from the outside so there's no scar, but you, cut, you, you open the lip, you cut the gum, and then you access the mandible from in there. You cut it. You, you literally break the bone and split it in two. Then you install an MSE-like appliance with a jack screw, and then you slowly turn and expand so that the mandible expands this way. This, my understanding is that this can be done in conjunction with MSE to ensure that the mandible keeps up with the lateral expansion of the MSE on the upper. Uh, the, the issue with this is that when you expand the mandible this way, it can put stress on the TMJ because think about it, when you rotate this bone and this bone outward, you're going to also alter the position of the condyle in the joint and so that will be the limiting factor of a procedure like this. But um, it is a very interesting option and one that intrigued me, however one that I will not be doing because I will be doing SFOT, the prior mentioned treatment, in order to create uh, expansion on the lower, or at least on the lower teeth, so that my lower teeth match my upper teeth following MSE treatment. The third option for expanding the mandible would be a forward expansion of the mandible, that is, this way, and that is uh, your basic standard jaw surgery uh, expansion of the mandible which involves cutting the mandible here and cutting the mandible here, moving the mandible forward, usually in conjunction with the upper, and then installing plates to hold the mandible in that now forward position. And if you wanted to Google this to learn more about it, you would Google mandibular osteotomy. So these are your three options for expanding the mandible. The first is actually movement of the teeth. It's a tooth borne type of expansion. Uh, it does not actually provide any skeletal expansion of the mandible. Then there's mandibular symphysial distraction osteogenesis, which is a bone borne expansion. It expands the mandible this way. And then there's a mandibular osteotomy, which is an expansion of the mandible this way. The second and third options uh, you might say are more invasive, although SFOT is not anything that I, I would certainly not call SFOT minimally invasive. It is, and it involves flaying of the gums and, and it is a surgery, you know, by all means. However, the second and third options will require, you know, several months of healing while the, the fracture that's created in the bone fills in with new bone. So I hope you enjoyed the video and please uh, provide more questions on my website or in the comments below. Also, just so you know, I've posted final pictures of the expansion of my MSE on my website, link in the description below, www.ronaldeed.com, so you can see what the final expansion over 11 millimeters of MSE expansion looks like with high quality dental photos. And also on my website, if anyone wants to have a one-on-one -on -one chat, which I've been having increased demand for, you can sign up for a consultation at www.ronaldeed.com. I think the prices are reasonable and you can, you, know, you can have me for a half hour or an hour to ask me anything you want about expansion, about mewing, about adult orthodontic appliances, or really about anything. So hope to talk to you soon. That's it for now. Peace out.